speaking test consists of three parts. This video is about part one. We will begin the video by talking about what happens on the part one of a speaking test. We will then discuss some tips that should help us get a good score on speaking part one. And then finally, we will practice a few questions. Let us start with the first part of the video. Part one of the speaking test lasts for about four to five minutes and we'll have questions on three different topics. We're asked about three to four questions on each of these topics. So we have a total of about 10 questions on the first part of a speaking test. Part one starts with an identity check and this part of the test is not marked. This is what happens in the identity check. Hello, my name is Nav. Could you tell me your full name, please? What shall I call you? Could you tell me where you're from? Can I see your identification, please? This part of the speaking test is not assessed. So please give simple, clear, factual answers. The examiner will now continue to ask us questions on three different topics. The first topic is almost always one of these two. The examiner will either ask questions about where you live or what you do. Here are some examples of some of the questions we could be asked for topic one. Do you live in a big city or a small town? Do you live in a house or an apartment? Are you a student or do you work somewhere? The questions that would follow will depend on how you answered the first question. For example, if you said that you live in a big city, the examiner may ask questions like, what type of places are there for shopping in your city? Do you think you will continue to live in the city in the future? What changes would you like to see in your city? Topic number two and three are some general questions where you asked things that you're familiar with. So here you talk about yourself and your experiences. These are some examples of topic two and three. Let's now talk about some tips for the first part of a speaking test. So we just learned that the first part of a speaking test consists of questions on three different topics. The examiner will use some transition phrases between these topics. That way, it becomes clear to us that the examiner is now moving on to the next topic. For example, for the first topic, the examiner may start with a sentence like, let's talk about where you live or let's talk about what you do and then for the second topic the examiner may say something like let's now move on to talk about films and then finally for topic three the examiner may begin with a sentence like now let us talk about cooking On the first part of a speaking test, we're asked questions about us and our experiences. So we should be able to comfortably give very clear and concise answers. Since for part one of the speaking test, we're asked questions that we're familiar with, it is very common for students to memorize answers for this part of the speaking test, but the examiner will know and we will lose marks for memorized answers. So try and keep it natural, avoid memorizing some answers, and do not give unnecessary details. For example, let's say the examiner asks where I'm from, and this is how I respond to the question. Well, I'm originally from Chandigarh, which is a city in North India, but I now live in Surrey. Surrey is a beautiful city, and uh, what I like most about this city is uh, the beautiful parks, and um, I also love to go shopping at different malls in the city. 
and uh, I've been living in the city for the past. Now the examiner is thinking that you memorized that answer. So when the examiner asks you where you're from, all you have to do is simply tell where you're from. If the examiner asks you why you like the city, then you may go on to talk about the various reasons why you like the city. However, we should also avoid giving just a single sentence answers because then we're not giving enough content to the examiner to mark us on. For example, if the examiner asks, how often do you cook? Now, instead of simply answering with not very often or I cook daily, I may give some reason to support my answer. So I could rather answer this question with, well, not very often because I simply don't have enough time to cook. I used to cook daily before, but um, I recently started a new job and uh, I just don't have enough time to cook daily anymore. So remember to give clear, concise answers, but it always is a good idea to support your answer with a reason or examples. A lot of students assume that the first part of the speaking test is mostly about present tense. Well, yes, most of the questions are about present tense, but remember the examiner is also going to mark you on your grammar. So there could be questions about past or about future. For example, the examiner may ask you, do you think you will cook more or less in the future? or there could be questions where you're supposed to use both the past and present tense. For example, the examiner may ask, as compared to the past, do you spend more or less time on cooking now? On the third part of our speaking test, we're mostly asked questions about people in general, but on the first part, the questions are usually going to be about us and our experiences so it will help to practice these questions for example questions about things that we like and dislike and uh, questions about uh, our job or our academic qualifications so make sure that you listen to the question and answer accordingly for example if the examiner asks what type of restaurants do you enjoy going to this is not how you want to answer that question. Well, fast food restaurants are very popular in my country. A lot of people now eat at fast food restaurants um, almost every day. And uh, this could be because uh, people are now able to afford eating out more frequently. And also we have lots of uh, international fast food chains opening in my country. The examiner asked about you, the type of restaurants that you enjoy going to. Now, when you go on to talk about the type of restaurants that people in your country or your hometown enjoy going to, you're really just telling the examiner that this is the answer you had memorized for when you asked about restaurants. If you're not too sure what the examiner asks, you can always ask the examiner to repeat a question, but you cannot ask the examiner to rephrase a question. For part one, the examiner will simply repeat the question word for word from the prompt. For part three, however, you may even ask the examiner to paraphrase a question. I always recommend recording your answers while you're practicing. When you listen to your recording, you will be able to spot a lot of your own mistakes. And it is always easier to correct your mistakes when you're able to spot them yourself rather than having someone else do it for you. And you will also be able to come up with more ideas because when you listen back to your recording, you're also thinking, oh, I could also have said this. Oh, I could have given this example for this question. So it helps to listen to your recording and try and come up with better responses. It will help you immensely to role play with a speaking partner where you may take turns as an examiner and then as a candidate. 
because when you're sitting in the examiner's chair, you may be able to come up with some ideas which you otherwise won't because now you're not the candidate, so you're more relaxed. You do not have that exam anxiety and you may be able to come up with uh, more ideas. Now time to practice on It's now time to practice on It's now time to practice some questions for part one. Hello, my name is da da da. Could you tell me your full name, please? My name is Nabjot Kalo. What shall I call you? Please call me now. Can you tell me where you're from? I'm from India. Can I see your identification, please? Of course. In the first part of the test, I'm going to ask you questions about yourself. Let's talk about where you live. Do you live in a house or an apartment? I'm renting an apartment that I share with my sister. What is your favorite part of your house? It will have to be the living room because that's where the TV is and I'm a big TV person. I enjoy watching shows and movies on my downtime. Is there anything you would like to change in your house? Not the house, not the building per se, but uh, I would definitely like to change, rather upgrade the decor. I would also like to have more indoor plants. Why? Because uh, I've developed a bit of a green thumb lately. Yeah, it's a hobby that I picked during the pandemic. Now let's talk about shopping. Do you enjoy shopping? Not particularly. In fact, to me, shopping is more of a chore than a pastime. How often do you go shopping? Not very often. I'm not big on winter shopping, so I really only go shopping when I need something. So I think I go shopping only once a month or two months. That does not include grocery shopping, of course, which happens every weekend. Will you shop more online or at the mall in the future? I do most of my shopping online and I think even in the future, I will continue to do so. Um, the traffic in my city is getting worse by the day. And uh, unfortunately, there is no mall close to where I live. So I think um, in the future also, most of my shopping will happen online. Now let's talk about cooking. Who normally does cooking in your home? Both my sister and I. I usually cook on the weekends because that's when I have free time. But uh, my sister does most of her cooking during the week. In general, do you prefer eating out or eating at home? I prefer eating at home. So when I used to live with my family, I would thoroughly enjoy my mom's cooking. Um, but I'm not the best cook myself. So ever since I moved out, I have been eating out a lot. How did you learn to cook? From my mom. Growing up, I would help her around the house. I spent a lot of time with her in the kitchen, so that's how I learned to cook. But more recently, I have been following a lot of YouTube channels. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and also share it with your friends who are preparing for IELTS. I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about speaking part two.